Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to be making a compound called chloropentaamine cobalt 3 chloride. And it's going to need uh, a few things to make it. So what I have here is 6 grams of ammonium chloride, 12 grams of cobalt chloride, which is hydrated. I have 30 milliliters of concentrated 31.45% hydrochloric acid. I have 10 milliliters of 35% hydrogen peroxide, and lastly, 40 milliliters of 10% aqueous ammonia. So first, what I'm going to want to do is turn on stirring and dissolve the ammonium chloride. So let's get to that. Alright, I'm going to turn on stirring. The stir bar might be a little bit big for this purpose, but it'll do just fine. Alright, here's the ammonium chloride, and in it goes. This will all dissolve, so don't worry. Oh boy, my stir bar is really having a little bit of trouble. Let me turn up the stirring, but try not to splash it. Uh, ammonia is pretty stinky. So I'm going to let that stir there for a little bit until that dissolves, and I'll come right back when that is dissolved. You know what I mean. Okay, now that that's all dissolved, it's got sort of a glossy appearance to it. Interesting, but uh, regardless, now I'm going to add in small portions the cobalt chloride. Uh, in my case, mine's the dihydrate. In the original synthesis, um, it was proposed that you use hexahydrate, but I just uh, went ahead and used uh, dihydrate because that's what I have on hand. I guess you can use anhydrous, but you'll have to alter it for that. So, here we go. I'm just going to add a little spatula full of the cobalt 2 chloride. And again, my stir bars trying to, trying to slack on me here, but I'm just gonna um, add the cobalt chloride in portions until it's all dissolved, and then we can get right to uh, adding the peroxide. Okay, now that most of it's dissolved, and my stir bar is thinking it's gonna go on strike again, but uh, I'm gonna give it a little encouragement here. There we go, much better. Um, now that that's mostly dissolved, uh, we've got this nice, uh, sort of odd, really deep red color. It's, uh, funnily enough, it's uh, pretty similar to the color that uh, blood becomes after it's uh, contacted uh, carbon monoxide, so kind of interesting. I believe Kemplayer has a video showing exactly that. Um, it's a little bit different, but interesting nonetheless. Okay. So now that it's mostly dissolved, I'm going to go ahead and uh, dropwise add, using this pipette, um, the 35% hydrogen peroxide. And hopefully we'll get a uh, deep uh, brown, sort of yellow, sort of orange color of the cobalt-3 complex. We'll probably get some oxygen evolution here. That sound here is uh, oxygen being released. And we'll get some bubbles. There is probably some decomposition of the peroxide um, through a catalytic method with a metal or something like that. Uh, it wouldn't surprise me if there was. You can already start to see the color changing to a more brown, orange sort of color. And some water vapor being let off. It's probably exothermic. I haven't really felt this. Oh yeah, definitely exothermic. That was pretty cold. Uh, it's pretty cold up here. Um, and that beaker has uh, warmed up a decent amount. So there definitely is an exothermic reaction going on here which isn't really that surprising. I'm going to ditch the pet. Start adding it. Let's get some of that smoke out of there. Let me turn on the fan for just a sec. 
can see it better. Okay, much better. And once all this is added in, I'm going to let it stir for probably another 30 seconds and then add the hydrochloric acid in a few portions, probably about five portions or so, to limit the exotherm. Okay, it's about 30 seconds later and uh, the beaker is substantially hotter than it was at the beginning. And uh, now what I'm going to do is add my concentrated hydrochloric acid and we'll probably, uh, if we're lucky, uh, chances are we're going to be lucky for this and uh, we're going to see a, in my experience, it's a, sort of a maroon color uh, of the precipitated uh, chloropentaamine cobalt 3 chloride. So in goes the hydrochloric acid. Let me zoom out a little so you can see the the full thing. I don't know. Hopefully my reflection won't show up for undisclosed reasons. Jesus. All right, in goes the hydrochloric acid. You can already see some smoke of ammonium chloride forming. That's normal. Alright, just what we want to see. There's a nice, yeah, I'm already starting to see that maroon color. I don't know if you're able to, but I am. And again, we'll get a little bit of oxygen evolution. That's normal. Alright, and that's all added now. Let me turn on the fan again for a few seconds. I do smell a little bit of chlorine. Uh, I don't know if that's due to the decomposition of the acid or what, but definitely a little bit of a chlorine smell. Okay. Uh, you might now be able to see the maroon color of the complex beginning to form. Let me tweak the ISO here. That didn't help much, but uh, it'll become very apparent shortly, believe me. Alright, so now we're going to want to heat this uh, solution to uh, 85 degrees Celsius. Uh, now, that's what the synthesis said, but um, my hot plate really is kind of screwy. It's pretty cheapo, if you ask me. But, uh, I mean, it does the job. But, uh, just, I'd say, um, heat it to, you know, anywhere below boiling. Um, uh, as the synthesis said, 85 degrees Celsius is a good place to go, and uh, hold it there for 20 minutes. And uh, after that, I'll come back and uh, we'll see what we got. Hi. Okay, let's see what we got. Yeah, uh, that's pretty good. Um, it's a fair amount of uh, marine precipitate, which will increase when uh, this gets colder. So with that being said, I'm going to go ahead and uh, let this cool down a little bit, um, just in the lab here. And then I'm going to move it to my freezer, where it's going to further crystallize. Okay, well, it seems that my shitty hot plate really want to go against me here and uh, it absolutely roasted this thing. I'm just left with some green crap at the bottom and no real precipitate uh, so I have no idea what happened but it's not a complete failure. I think that if my hot plate weren't you know so uh, cheap I guess um, then it would have worked a lot better but however I do have some product to show you from the first run, so let me go grab that. Okay guys, quick update. Um, something really exciting. Um, as this cooled down in front of the fan, look at that, started to get some precipitate. Awesome. So, um, I'm going to go ahead and add this, but this was not a failure. That makes me very happy. I actually got something from that, even though I messed up pretty bad. So, 
that just goes to show don't give up on your chemistry projects even if they you know don't succeed at first all right so if done correctly and you know not with a chinese budget uh, hot plate stirrer then you should get something that looks a bit like this much more maroon color i've got some nice crystals forming in there now it's quite cold in my uh, fridge and a nice crop of crystals you can see sort of at the bottom there. There you can sort of see it. If I adjust the focus here real quick, if you'll excuse me. There we go. Quite a good bit of crystals for a small amount of starting material. Uh, will probably uh, sort of contract when it dries, but uh, it's uh, supposed to be dried at 90 C after washing with uh, cold water I believe. Uh, ice cold water and maybe ethanol after that. Um, but yeah, this was the preparation of chloropentaamine cobalt 3 chloride. I really hope you enjoyed. If you haven't subscribed, feel free to. Feel free to like the video. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time.